friends, and welcome back to another Friday with me. These past few weeks have flown by. I literally had the most fabulous time of my life on vacation, but now I'm back. And I was happy to come back because fall is coming. And fall means that Halloween is coming. And I know a lot of you don't celebrate Halloween, but you might still like this nifty little pattern that I'm gonna sew up with you today. It is originally called the bunny basket. Have you heard of that pattern? I wonder. It's on the Ellie and Mac website. It's the bunny. What? <laughs> it's the bunny. Why can't I say bunny basket? It's the bunny basket pattern. And this week, I'm gonna use that pattern to create this nifty trick-or-treat bag. Isn't that so cute? And look at the inside, woohoo, I love it. So easy, such a fast sew, and you could literally bump out like a whole ton of these at a time. And they come in small, medium, and large. This is the large one, look, y'all. Oh, gosh. I know I'm doing the most right now, but you still love me and you're still here. So if you want to see how I made this nifty little Halloween basket out of the bunny basket pattern, you got to stick around, right? Yes! Absolutely. I'm Nye with Ellie and Mac. Come along, friends. <laughs> Okay, for this tutorial, I actually did something a little different and I filmed mostly top down myself sewing the pattern. So you may not see me for most of this tutorial, but you'll hear my voice as I go over the instructions for how to make the trick or treat bag. I hope you don't miss me too much. <laughs> you will need one Pika Bunny basket pattern, one yard of flex foam, one yard of fabric for your mane, one yard of fabric for your lining, one yard of medium interfacing, one face printout, one fabric marking pencil or chalk, one sheet of felt for your face pieces, fabric glue is optional. You will need a sewing machine, scissors, clips, thread, scissors, ruler, and an iron with an ironing board or mat. Step one. Check that you have all of your pattern pieces cut out in main fabric, lining fabric, interfacing, and flex foam. Be sure to cut out your chosen face pieces from your printout, which is located in the description below. Okay, let's do a quick inventory. You'll see that I have my bottom, my sides pieces, my front and back pieces, I have my felt and my paper pieces cut out for my face. And I also have a handle cut out. I'm going to quickly check to make sure that I have all the pieces cut out that I should have on each pattern piece. Here I have the main front and back with two lining pieces, two main pieces, two interfacing pieces, and two pieces of flex foam. That lining piece you see there with the cute little characters, that's a Riley Blake print. Just FYI in case you were curious. I'll set that aside. Then I have my side piece where I cut two main, two lining, two interfacing, and two pieces of flex foam. Now the flex foam that I used here has an adhesive on one side so that you don't have to do the step where you sew around a quarter of an inch, you just press it on. So here you'll have the bottom where I cut one main, one lining, one interfacing, and one flex foam. Be careful not to cut two here because you're gonna run out of materials. So for the handle, you just cut one main and one interfacing. We begin by pressing your interfacing to the wrong side of your pattern pieces. Here you'll see that I'm using my Panasonic cordless iron to press my interfacing to the wrong side of my main fabric pieces. This could take a while. I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up. Woof, 
This is exhausting. <laughs> now we sew our flex foam to the interfacing side of the pattern pieces, front, back, sides, and bottom. Sew a quarter of an inch from the raw edges using a long straight stitch. Now, if you're like me and you purchased fusible flex foam, then you may press it to the fabric instead. It goes a whole lot faster. But if you didn't, it's all good. Just go ahead and use your sewing machine. That's what we got them for, right? Woohoo! Right. Now I'm going to go ahead and press that flex foam to each of my pieces. And I'm probably going to speed it up just a tad because I don't want to bore you to death. So here I'm indicating where you would actually sew it around each piece a quarter of an inch from the raw edge of each of the pieces that require the flex foam. I believe the handle is the only piece that does not require flex foam. Hmm, doesn't want to be like the others, does it? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this a little bit faster and then we'll get to the next step. Okay, now what you wanna do is take your front main piece and fold it in half, matching the two short sides. You wanna press it to create a crease and then open it back up. I had a little difficulty with mine. As you can see, I went ahead and I folded it in half. I took my nifty little iron and I pressed over it, but then my fabric and foam just kind of crinkled up, kind of like, a, crow's feet on the side of your eyes you know the little wrinkles on the sides that's what happened to mine so i ended up actually giving in and using a ruler to create a line that i would use um, as a guide to place my face that's all it is for it's just a guide so that you can place your face pieces but if the fold works for you go with it i mean don't make it any more difficult than it needs to be like i did here um so yeah, this is where I go get my pencil and start drawing a line in the middle because I'm not smarter than the equipment that I'm working with sometimes. <laughs> but this works for me. So sometimes you got to think out of the box and uh, create another way. There's always a window when there's no door open. And here I am. Just go ahead and press that flat. Now you can place that aside. Cut out the face from the printed paper that you found in the description below. Pin those paper pieces to a piece of felt. Trace around them with a chalk pencil. Cut out the felt in the shape of the face pieces. You can use the measurements for the bunny face or you can arrange the face pieces as you like and then pin them to the front main of your basket pattern piece. You may also choose to use a dab of fabric glue to keep these pieces in place so they don't move when you sew them. Okay, so really quickly, I take all of my paper pieces and I pin them to a black piece of felt because that's the color that I chose. And then when I'm done pinning them, I go ahead and trace around them with my white fabric chalk pencil and cut them all out. Once I have them all cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and work on some placement. Okay, now it's time to place your face pieces. So you wanna measure down an inch and a half from the middle line and then three quarters of an inch to each side of that line. Place the corners of your eyes there. Then what you can do is align the eyes with your ruler just to make sure you have them exactly where you want them. Once you have them nice and aligned the way you like them, you can go ahead and pin them in place. If you want, you can cheat like me and use a dab of fabric glue once you get started because these things love to shift around and move. Once you're done with your eyes, you can go back to that center marking and measure three and a quarter inches down the center to place the nose. Now you want to place the nose right on center. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. <laughs> and the same thing with the eyes. If you want to put a dab of glue, that's fine. And then you want to place the mouth. Just place it about an inch under the nose and center it on the median line. And of course, I put a little bit of nifty glue to help me out. How cute. 
Now look at me, I'm about to sew. <laughs> so what you wanna do is you wanna set a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine and pretty much zigzag the borders of each of your pieces. I like to set my zigzag stitch so that the outer zigzag is actually on the very edge of my pattern piece. And then when you're turning it, be sure to make sure that your needle is down. You can pick up your sewing foot, turn your fabric, and then put your sewing foot down and continue to zigzag in the correct direction. It can be a little difficult to learn at first, but really it's the best way to zigzag. Like you should definitely stop when changing directions, leave your needle down, pick up your presser foot, and then turn your fabric in the direction in which you want to continue sewing. It will make your life so much easier than trying to shift your fabric whilst still underneath your presser foot. And you'll see here, that's exactly what I did is I picked up my foot and I turned my fabric around right there, see? and then continue to zigzag. It'll take a little bit of practice to get that zigzag exactly where you want it, but you know what? Practice makes better. And uh, isn't that what we all would like to be just a teensy bit better every time we sew? <sighs> I know I would. Okay, so I changed angles uh, so that you can see there's the nose and I'm gonna go ahead and sew the mouth after I change angles because it was a little difficult to see from the side and I really wanted you to check it out how I did it in the machine. I actually enjoyed this immensely and I just adore how the face came out. Look how cute it is, oh my God! Use your ruler to draw a box that measures 3 8 inch on the bottom corners of your front main piece. Cut those boxes out. Now, remember to repeat for all back pieces, all front pieces, and all side pieces. Don't forget to cut the boxes in those linings. When you're done with that, cut one 3 8 inch box out of each corner of your bottom piece. Now it's very important to remember that you are only cutting the 3 8 inch squares on the bottom of the front, back, and side pieces and their linings. The bottom piece of the basket, you're going to cut all four corners of your bottom piece because it's going to connect to the other pieces, all four corners will. So you need to have all four corners cut out of only your bottom piece. And don't forget about those linings. You're doing a great job. You're going to take one side main piece and place it onto your front main piece, right sides together. I don't know how I feel about saying side piece. Mm. Pin and clip. So using a straight stitch, press the seams open and repeat for your other side, not side piece. <laughs> we don't need no side pieces. front and sides are sewn together, place a back main piece onto one of the side main pieces, aligning the raw edges, pin and clip. Sew using a straight stitch. Press your seams open and repeat for the other side. This is going to create kind of like a tube or a donut. <laughs> because I think way too much about food. Okay, this part is pretty straightforward. Make sure that you align the back piece right sides facing to your sides with your 3 8 inch cutouts all on the bottom. 
and you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I went ahead and just pinned them all together at once because it makes it easy for me to do it all at one time through my sewing machine. Okay, now you kind of have like a box. And what you wanna do is you wanna align one edge of your bottom main with your front main and put them right sides together, pin, clip, and sew a straight stitch. Now, what I did is I went ahead and clipped all four sides. Don't forget, the bottom piece has those 3 8 inch cutouts on each corner. So you wanna make sure that they're aligned properly. And sew all four sides. Do your thing, you got this. See, you just place that bottom piece right inside. You got it all right sides together, all nifty fancy and whatnot. And then you just clip in and then sewing. When you're done sewing the long sides, go ahead, clip and sew the short sides. Now this part of the pattern might be difficult for you to visualize. Take your basket standing and still wrong sides out, fold one corner of that basket towards the inside of the bag. It's gonna leave the bottom corner sticking out. Then what you wanna do is you wanna flatten that corner out measure half an inch in and sew a straight line across that corner. Please be sure to lock or backstitch to make sure it doesn't come out. And then to reduce bulk, you wanna trim the excess from the corner. Make sure not to clip into your stitches or you're gonna have a hole in the corner of your bag. Repeat for all remaining corners. Now I'm gonna show you how that works because Saying it doesn't make any sense, but seeing is believing. Okay, now you can see that I have my bag wrong sides out. I'm gonna go ahead and bend that corner in towards the inside of the bag. See how that makes sense now? Now, what I wanna do is I wanna measure diagonally, or actually I wanna measure from the corner inward half an inch, and then draw a diagonal line across that corner and that line is where I'm going to sew. So what it's going to do is going to create less of a pointy corner for my basket. Trust me, it's going to look great. Now once I sew across it, I'm going to go ahead and trim any excess fabric just so it's not all bulky and gross. <laughs> and then I'm going to move on to the next step, y'all. Okay now y'all, it ain't a basket if it don't have a handle. So take your handle piece and fold it wrong sides together lengthwise. Press it to create a memory crease. Now, if you would like a handle that is more structured, go ahead and cut another piece of fusible interfacing. Otherwise, you can just use the one. Now that you have that center crease, you wanna take your handle piece lengthwise and fold one side inward raw edge to meet your center crease. Take the other side and also fold that inward to meet your center crease. Now it looks like you have a flat book. Press. Now it's time to close that book. Fold that handle piece one more time lengthwise to enclose the raw edges. Press one more time. Top stitch 1 8 from both edges using a long straight stitch. Now that's a handle for you. Good job. Now that you have that fancy handle together, find and mark the center of the basket side edges. Pin each of the raw handle edges to the center side markings and baste in place. Be sure when doing this to keep the handle around the right side of the basket. Now you can see that I'm gonna go ahead and take my handle and I'm gonna pin it to the side of my basket. And then I'm gonna run the other side all the way around the outside of the basket. Don't worry about crushing the basket. It's gonna be okay. It's made out of foam, so it's pretty resilient. 
and you're gonna mark the side again and pin that handle there to your side piece, not to your side piece, to the side of your basket. We don't have any side pieces here. So we're in the home stretch, y'all. With the main basket right sides out and your lining wrong sides out, slide your main into the lining. That sounds dirty. Make sure your handle is between the layers. Now align the top raw edges, pin or clip them together. Now sew using a straight stitch, leaving a four inch opening on the back side of your basket. When you're done sewing, you will pull the basket right side out through that four inch gap. Now that your basket is right sides out, you want to close the opening you left for turning. So press the seam, wrong sides touching inward, 3 eighths of an inch and press. You may use a dab of fabric glue or a bit of fusible web to keep this together. That's just a little tip from me to you. Top stitch around the top of your basket at one quarter inch from the top edge. This will close the opening you left for turning. Wasn't that the best thing ever? So fast, so easy, so fun, and no more having to buy random bags or use Walmart bags like I do because I'm cheap for your kids. <laughs> you can even use these as storage baskets. If you like, you can leave this off and just use it as a storage basket for your bathroom, for your kitchen, for your pantry, for your fabrics. You can do what I do and put in your snacks. Yay! Hey, what is going on? Ugh. Anywho, I hope you had a good time this week. I had a fabulous time and I cannot wait to see you next time on the Ellie and Mac YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please go on down there and subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. Hit that notification bell so you're here on time because I'm always here on every other Friday to hang out with you because we're friends. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to sew the things! Yeah! <laughs> Bye friends.